Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast, episode 142. We are tempted by our own desire. A guided Christian meditation on James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. My name is Chaplain Jared, and I work as a hospice chaplain. I've also worked as an ICU chaplain, and the reason why I make this podcast is to help you to find more peace in your life, to be more open, to be changed and influenced by the Spirit of God, and to feel His overwhelming love for you. Today we'll be doing the full Lectio Divina style meditation, which will include six main parts. I'll lead you in a brief relaxation, followed by a reading from the Bible, an opportunity to reflect on that meeting, prayer, contemplative silence, and an opportunity to look for how to apply that message in our lives. This episode is a continuation of two other episodes which I did on James 1, which are found in episode 42 and 43. So if you want to cross-reference those, that might be helpful. For now, though, find a place where you can sit comfortably and uninterrupted for the next 20 minutes. The goal of this relaxation is to help clear our minds and remove distractions that would prevent us from fully receiving the message that God has for us. I want you to become aware of any thoughts that may be distracting. As you notice them pop up, instead of trying to judge them or feel bad that you're not able to keep focus, just notice that you had a thought and let it pass you right on by. Regardless of what that thought is or how pressing you feel it is, allow it just to pass for the moment. Our natural humanity creates a constant stream of these types of distractions. And unless we give specific focus on it, many times we can be caught up in the whirlwind that is our thoughts. So for now, just allow each thought to breeze gently by without being caught up with it. As you do this, you notice your body is unflexing, your mind is calming, your heartbeat slowing, and you experience glimmers of joy and peace. You may even feel a smile easing its way across your face as you're able to dedicate this moment entirely to receiving this message. Your body is finding a rhythm, comforting, soothing rhythm, which allows the cares of the world to gently melt away. Your body will never force you to do anything. So even as you attempt to sit in calm reflection, your body may present things that are distractions. You don't have to yield to them. So now that we've spent these few moments in calming relaxation, let us focus now on the scripture for today's meditation. It's in James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. First, I'll be reading from the NRSV translation. No one, when tempted, should say, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. 
Then when that desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And that sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. Continue pondering now on the scripture. Now I will be reading from the NABRE version and notice the interesting and important slight differences and similarities. No one experiencing temptation should say, I am being tempted by God, for God is not subject to temptation, to evil, but he himself tempts no one. Rather, each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own will. Then desire conceives and brings forth sin. And when sin reaches maturity, it gives birth to death. Continue reflecting on this scripture and its meaning. Our thoughts are the basis of action, and though they often begin very small, they can grow into whole worldviews, as well as actions and habits. A few years ago, when I was serving on active duty in the Navy, I had a chance to go aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt. This is an enormous 95,000 ton displacement aircraft carrier. I landed on the flight deck while it was out to sea, and it had roughly 5,000 people aboard. It's really a floating city. I was able to go all over the ship, and I also got a chance to visit the bridge. And while I was there, I was allowed to take the helm, which is the steering wheel. The conning officer, as well as the helmsman, were standing over my shoulder, helping me. And I held this relatively small steering wheel. The helmsman showed me the screen on the course heading we were on, and the margin that I was allowed to stay within. I thought this would be easy to stay within this allowable margin. It was not. With wind and underwater currents, the wheel had to be constantly turned back and forth, and several times the ship rushed out of the acceptable margin before I could correct. I've reflected on the irony of this many times. This floating city was controlled by a small steering wheel in my hand, about the same size as my car's steering wheel. I probably did it for about 30 minutes or so, and when I finally gave the wheel back over to the helmsman, I was physically tired from the focus and nerves of trying to maintain the course on this enormous ship. I came to appreciate the automated systems and helmsmen who are normally engaged to keep the ship on course. And I find that this is an analogy for you and me. Our thoughts and our desires are such small things. Yet these things can drive us to violate the word of God and to sin. Our self-discipline is the small steering wheel upon which our eternal course is managed. And the most powerful being in the universe has given us control of the helm of our lives. He does not tempt us, but he allows us to work against our desires. He allows us to struggle. He knows that we will not be able to do it without his help. His mercy and his grace allow us to overcome when we fall outside of the margins of his word. 
each one of us can ponder how we manage the desire we experience. How do you manage your desire? When you feel desire, even for good things, how do you respond to it? I believe that God gives us the right and the ability to develop and grow, and as we learn to trust Him and have faith in Him, our relationship with Him grows stronger as we realize how much we need Him and how to trust Him when we fall outside of the margins of His course heading. Continue pondering this thought and this message. Please join me now in prayer. Holy Father, as we sit now pondering the course our life is on, the course corrections we're making, and the difficulties we have in overcoming desire, we ask for thy guidance as we humbly submit before thee our need. Many times we're overcome by our desires and we fail to resist them. May we have the insight and the power necessary to manage our internal experience in such a way that we don't yield to our desires that would take us away from thy path. Help us and inspire us. And we are grateful for the guidance we've received so far, the scriptures, and the Holy Spirit influencing us. We thank thee, Father, for this. And this we say in Jesus' name. Amen. Continue now in prayer. Now let's take a few moments in sitting in contemplative silence where we're not pondering any specific thought. We're just enjoying the stillness and the silence and the experience with God's Spirit, sensing the answers He places upon our hearts.
And now the application step. As we attempt to synthesize this message into our lives, it's helpful to first summarize what is it exactly that we gained from this reflection. And then, how can it apply directly to circumstances in our lives? So picture those two things. First of all, what did you experience or gain from this meditation? And second, how can it directly apply? For example, perhaps as you reflected, you realized the ability that you have to not yield to temptation or to overcome it once you do. And perhaps you can ponder a situation where you're overcoming a temptation that perhaps has been difficult in the past. Thanks for joining me today. I'd be honored if you can share this message by emailing it, sharing it on social media, or just by word of mouth, sharing this message with those who you feel may need it. You can truly bless their lives by sharing the Word of God with them. If you want to find out more information about the podcast, me, listen to past episodes, you can go to my website, which is christianmeditationpodcast.com. Those three words all smash together. Also, there's a link there on how to donate to the podcast. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash Christian Meditation Podcast if you'd like to financially support the podcast and the efforts of reaching as many people as we can. I have a final question that I want you to consider. And I want you to write out this answer or speak it out to someone else. Get it outside of your mind. How do you currently work to overcome your fallen human desire? How do you currently work against your desire? In Christian history, many people have gone to extremes regarding desire. In many situations, our human desire causes untold amounts of hardship and suffering for us. Yet when we learn to yield our desires to God and realize that it's part of our fallen nature, we don't need to suffer so much. We can let the yearning of our desire pass by as we don't give into it. As we humble our will before God, we will avoid the natural consequences of yielding to human desire. And similarly, when we fail to overcome temptation and we submit to our desires, we can recover with God's mercy. There is nothing that we can do in our lives which is beyond the grace and forgiveness of God. We can be encouraged to approach the Lord and do what is needed to get back on track and direct ourselves back along the heading that he has taught us and given us. He desires a relationship with you. As you and I both struggle with our human nature, he stands by willing to lend all the help that we need. He does not give us temptation, but he does give us a way out. I pray that you will find this hope, that you will find peace in overcoming, bit by bit, in baby steps, our human desire. And as we do that, we feel close to him and we feel 
of his love, for he truly does love you, and he loves me. And this I say in Jesus' name, amen.